Let's talk about the big game that's going to happen in South Carolina in Liverpool's pre-season, where they go away to play Manchester United, which means we get to model this kit. Manchester United, of course, playing in their home kit and acting as the home team in this one. Whether that matters or not, I don't know. But a smooth out roll, a rollout for this Liverpool jersey, the black. I quite like it. We'll see how it looks on the field. I've really enjoyed watching Liverpool's home jersey away in America. It looks quite effervescent in those lights. All the players tanned, it's looking quite good. The white contrast, the neck, I think it's nice. Let me know what you guys think. There is a kit review of our season kit on the channel. Go and take a look at that, it's from yesterday. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Manchester United and their preseason. They've actually been relatively strong in their preseason. I think they've shown that they are moving forward from what was happening last season, that they are a different side, that a couple of things have been maybe swept under the rug, a uh, few things have gone under the bridge, what's been some water under the bridge, but also how, you know, these new signings that they've made aren't, I mean, you know, it's not that they're not impacting the side or won't impact the side, it's that they aren't yet like in a position to play. So Manchester United have kind of had to make the most of their squad in pre-season. And bear in mind, they've not even had the best of the best of their players come back yet. So they're still using some of the, what I would consider to be leftover Manchester United pieces to cobble together a back line. And of course, they've been very unlucky in losing Lenny Yoro, someone who at one point I think may have been Liverpool target until Liverpool were told, we're only gonna let him go to certain clubs, we're only gonna let him go for a certain fee, he's only gonna be willing to do X, Y, Z, and Liverpool were suddenly out. And so everyone who's going, oh, well, we missed out there, or we should have moved in. Liverpool's profiling of players and Liverpool's elite level and history of recently signing great players I mean, it's not that they don't miss. I'm sure there are many times where the coach goes, God, I wish this guy could do this or should have done that. But if they don't want a player or they can't get a player or it's sort of like, look, he's only really going to go here because the cash deal works, what's the point? Anyway, out for three months with an injury. Really unlucky. Uh, I really enjoyed watching him play. Thought it was a really, I mean, not that we saw him for very long, but the highlights that I did see of him, I think it was very positive, forward-thinking play, which they definitely needed as a centre-back. He was very positive. Uh, his striking the ball looked a little unusual. Like he kind of looks, I don't know what it is. It looks quite hard when he strikes the ball. And a lot of football players, I don't feel that that is always the case. But yeah, I, I don't know what that indicates. Anyway, we're at Wamba Saka has been off. They're trying to get McTominay off to Jamie. Is it Fulham? Fulham. Uh, he was apparently their most forward lying player in the last game. I think that's just an aberration of the uh, average positions here, which is what I've also brought up. Jaden Sancho's back. Uh, you've got a couple of youngsters out there on the wing that I'm really enjoying watching in pre-season as well. Overall, I think Manchester United have shown there's an adaptability there. There is a wanting to get Jaden Sancho back into the side, see what he can do, uh, see if there is a reintegration of him, reintegrate people like Mason Mount when they ultimately get like the full set the squad back. Obviously, you can play Fernandez, you can play Casemiro, you could have played Lenny Oro, but I think now they're going to have to go for a Delict or someone like that. You can see the adaptability of the team, but they're still reintegrating certain players. I think what I found interesting about their last game was the spread across the front line that they played. The fact that obviously they could dominate the ball a little bit more against Real Batiste. The fact that they are a team who I think they're moving again in identity and transitioning again from what they did last season into a more possession-based kind of style. And I'd be quite interested, let me just come over here for a second. I'd be quite interested to see what you think of Manchester United in their preseason, especially when it comes up against Betis. Look at that for a side. They're playing Diallo, they're playing Rashford, they're playing Sancho up front, McTominay. There are, you can still see there are a lot of like bit part players. Then contrast that with what Liverpool are currently doing and the exercise that we have on. And it does feel quite different, especially when you look at, and maybe it makes it feel slightly more positive. Uh, you know, we've obviously got Kelleher in goal. We've obviously got Bradley, Kwanzaa, Sepp Vandenberg, and Kostas Dimikas in the back line. Harvey Elliott, Dominic Sobersly, Curtis Jones. Obviously, the great thing for us is we feel like we'll have got a lot of these guys back a little bit earlier. Some of them went out of competitions early. Some of them will have actually deliberately got put their summer aside for Liverpool. Fabio Carvalho and people like that, of course, ready to come back. And that's really what I'm loving about this Liverpool side right now is just looking at the different players that we can reintegrate. I, I love following Instagram right now. I, I love looking at the way that Liverpool have, you know, we've not got Van Dijk. We've not got some of the old faces of the Manes, Firminos, Hendersons, Fabinho's. We've not even got McAllister back. We've not even got half of the midfield that we're looking to build there. We've reintegrated some of the great players in Jota and those guys. We're assessing the squad. This isn't a cry to say never sign anyone again, but what it is a great, 
what it feels like a really positive exercise in is assessing what you have, talking about base ideas, what we achieved in the last game, what we are able to uh, coach into the players early on is that double pivot followed by the wide forwards, which is what Arnis Lott loves in the first place. Those little bounce passes really worked. Reintegrating Jota was really working. Harvey Elliott seems to be thriving in that 10 slash slightly more deep, so maybe like an eight come 10. Dominic Soboslai, deeper in that double pivot, which some people say is a six, but if you're playing in Arnis Lott's double pivot, is it really a six or is that more of like two progressed eights? especially when he reintegrates someone like Allison Kelleher really I mean some of his distribution wasn't great in the last game uh, and obviously there was that opportunity but I think we're seeing he wants to play with and through the goalkeeper it's just interesting to watch like all these different shapes that is Endo alongside uh, Jones which I think would be an earlier kickoff from them you've then got Jones alongside Soboslai in the last game you've got this actually pretty typical Liverpool backline shape now and you can see, we're trying, we're trying Fabio Carvalho. You can see we're trying out some new shapes in midfield. There's like a lopsided box type idea. You could definitely, in this game, you could have drawn a box here, but you also can draw a box over these guys. I think it was basically that. And then Jota was making all these really incisive through runs with Salah pushing wide, cutting inside. And these are all really key Arnie slot. I want to say uh, characteristics in this, but I think there's even more to it. We don't even have a recognised striker out there unless it's uh, Jota. And you could see the shape of this Liverpool team in the second half. If I can find it, I think it was this one. Yeah, like, you know, that's us trying to play without, again, recognised big name strikers. Seems that we're not quite, like we're allowing Salah a lot of time out in the field. I'd love to have seen Ben Doak play with what I would consider to be more of a starting 11 out there. If we'd have had Jaden Dans, it would have been such a fun preseason. I love that we're trying to get Kay Gordon back into it. I think you can clearly see there's a bit of a, you know, uh, a hierarchy in the side. And I think what this preseason is certainly showing me is, uh, yeah, Harvey Elliott's out there. Harvey Elliott, at his age, will be someone that so many people within the squad are looking up to. And I know Harvey Elliott, it seems like a lovely kid, seems like a nice guy. I'm not saying he's like the brains of Britain or like, you know, you want to go out to dinner with him every day, but he seems like a lovely guy. And I think the point, the point is with Harvey, it's like a lot of the other squad guys are going to go, right, there is a direct route into the squad. It's why we signed that guy from Chelsea. It's why people like Trenioni are sticking around. There's so many different reasons because there seems like a direct route that Liverpool in recent years have changed some of their scouting to suit what it is that they want to achieve. You can see Quansar is in there, Bradley's in there, Curtis Jones is integrated in there. It's given me great heart in preseason, and it's something I really enjoy to look at. What's interesting is, considering we've signed no one over the summer, take a look at, that's one starting shape for us. This is the end of last season. That's how we finished the game against Wolves last season. I just think it's kind of interesting to look at. Like. What's interesting particularly is some people go, oh, so we're playing the same style. Like, that's Klopp, that's Slot. What we do with the ball when we win it back is so different. What we do when we, like, harry the opposition out of it and we do have that high press is so different. I get it. Like, obviously, we go, is there a route to goal? Yes. Like, let's try and take that route. But very often, it will then be to recycle possession, change some of the usage of the ball, and basically go, cool, keep that control. So, which is, by the way, something we haven't always had in these games, and it's something I'm really interested in seeing. Slot's spoken a lot about these principles, these ideas that he wants to get over to the players and trying to retain possession, trying to be dominant. Curtis Jones has said it loads. Harvey Elliott has said it loads. Mostly the guys who have been in interviews because they're the only people you hear say things. But the point is, like, within that, we've also been willing to change some of those things, compromise on some of that stuff, or make it through those times when we don't dominate possession against someone like Arsenal, or Arsenal are trying to play through our back line. What I do think is interesting is, Manchester United will serve a really particular challenge to this team, which I think will try to exploit what most people consider to be Liverpool's weakness. So far, we've obviously not played like an out-and-out six. I think Endo's been the closest to an out-and-out six that we've played, right? So just think for a second about what that means defensively for us, alongside the fact that we're playing Joel Consar and Seth Vandenberg as our starting uh, centre-backs, alongside Bradley, obviously, and then obviously not our starting choice goalkeeper as well, even though he could be. The point with that is, people are going to, oh, they're defensively frail. You can see the uh, frailties of a, a slot system. 
Are we really seeing that? Or are we really just seeing a pre-season where people are understanding new principles, where sometimes they aren't executed correctly? Obviously, it's great to get in behind Liverpool. Then a few teams have done that now. Arsenal certainly tried to exploit that. And if they put away some of their opportunities, would have been better. I'm not saying they didn't have a lot of opportunities. I think broadly, Arsenal you know, looked really dangerous going forward. But that's Arsenal. <laughs> like, Arsenal are a really good team. You're going to concede opportunities to them. And being dominant... I'm, I think it's going to be something we see as a change in Liverpool now. We are going to look to dominate possession. We are going to look to strangle the opposition. Something we kind of did a little bit under slot, uh, Klopp, but we will do in a very different way under slot through that midfield idea, through controlling with people like Sobosai, who look like such a good six, but also looks like a great 10 for Liverpool. The adaptability in this mi midfield and the need to be amorphous or sort of just, hey, this guy needs to be able to do this, is so satisfying as a Liverpool fan. Mainly because I think a lot of people thought, oh, these guys are role players. Endo can only do this. Jones can only do this. Sobosly, well, you know, was he limited by Klopp? Salah is updating and upgrading his game again. Fabio Cavani was out on loan last season in the championship, and there was a lot of questions around whether he was capable. We're seeing combos of him and Harvey Elliott, a great on-field on and off-field relationship. We're seeing Harvey Elliott thrive. And I think that's one thing we really need to acknowledge. And I'll probably acknowledge it more in the post-match. I just want to see what kind of game he has. But it will be worth acknowledging in the long run. Harvey Elliott's got a great level of ability. And I mean like an incredible level of ability, which would be recognised in so many other Premier League teams. It, it was difficult for him because I think it's very e easy to break into a, a top-end side and say, oh, well, I'm, I don't fit here, right? It's not easy to break into it, but it's easy to go, I don't fit. Klopp was asking him to play a very specific role and he, Klopp kind of moulded him more and more and got him to play more of a Harvey Elliott role in what Klopp wanted to do. This feels a bit more free, like Slot is working with our number 8, our number 19, our number 17, our number 28, our number 11, and saying to them, how is it, you know, how can we interpret this? How we, can we make this uh, fit your game? And it's working really well for someone like Harvey Elliott. He's a high-end player who I think compromised a lot to play in a great manager system, which was a great system for Liverpool. But that's what's really interesting about it, right? And that's what's really fascinating when it comes to watching Liverpool now. We're seeing these players in brand new roles, brand new um, iterations of what it is they're capable of, and it's breaking a lot of what Liverpool fans thought about them. And I really love that. Also, let's just talk for a second about things like this. Now, this wasn't uncommon and isn't uncommon in uh, most teams. Most people will have like a setup for different corners. It's nice to see Liverpool playing around with it in pre-season. Obviously, they were 1-0 up against Arsenal at the time. You can see they're kind of bunched up and then work their way out. There are many different approaches to this. Some managers love this idea. I think it looks like a bit of a set play from NFL or possibly NBA, probably close to NFL considering the number of runners. But the point with this is you're really just looking to get a run on all these Arsenal guys. Look what Arsenal do and don't really know what to do with this. I'd imagine if it becomes more common, and I don't know whether it will become more common, but it, there will be pluses and minuses to it. First of all, if the goalkeeper uh, catches the ball, there are two different ways of interpreting this. If your defenders are running in a direction where defence is uh, good for them, like if they can curve their run back, maybe it's great to already have some. You're not going from a standing start, having to catch up with someone who's sprinting away down the field. Cool. If you do head it and you do hit it, brilliant, it works, and you're through and you're in a great position to score a goal or to do whatever and cause some chaos. It definitely causes chaos. I would definitely say it makes it a little bit harder to... I mean, he, is a corner taker really thinking I'm going to put it on his head there? You're probably moving anyway. And it's also just great as well to see some difference, like some visible difference. I think a lot of people obviously see a visible difference between Liverpool and of last season and this season. But see some fun and some different techniques of training and coaching being integrated into this side. Liverpool have kind of done a th similar thing under Klopp, but with less players at one point. I think there are risks to it as well. There's the counter-attack risk, but there's also the risk that you do just give the ball away and something crazy happens and sure. It's kind of one of those fun plays, but at the same time, I'd be interested to see how much more Liverpool use it and if they deploy it in very specific circumstances because a lot of people now are working on very specific set pieces. City did it against Liverpool. Arsenal, I think, did it against Liverpool. A number of people have done it and I think it showed a lot of flaws that if your analysis, and there is analysis that shows some people are weak on things, people should try and exploit it. Just fun to do, and sometimes just mess with the opposition. Um, let me know what you're looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing the midfield battle. I wish there was a Mainu versus Bicetic or Mainu versus Nioni, like 
thing. I don't think that's going to happen. Liverpool's still expecting a lot of big stars back. I think we're going to get them back in the next couple of days. Obviously, it's not going to be, you know, throw them in at the deep end. They're going to be looking to get their fitness up. Not that it ever drops off all that much now. But if you are wandering around with Snoop Dogg sipping gin and juice, then maybe there's something to be said there. Love this new away kit, by the way. Really big fan. Uh, I personally think black, fantastic. It is close to a charcoal and black than anything else. I like charcoal. Uh, a lot of people questioning the teal. Let me know. Let me know what you think of these arms. Let me know what you think of this detail up here. And let me know what you think of this collar, which definitely feels like more of a charcoal. Looking forward to seeing Liverpool in it. If you're going, if you're in the States, if you're in South Carolina, let me know. If not, should I do a watch along? Is a watch along like something you want to see? Let me know. I get feeling watch longs might have been in a previous era of my life. But if you want me to do it, midnight till 3 a.m. It's time where I find it very easy to be awake. I appreciate it, guys. I'll chat to you in a while. Much love. Bye. Let me know your score predictions. I think broadly we'll probably start a starting 11 like this. Uh, and I think we'll finish the game looking more like this. But actually, I'd love to see this guy, this guy, uh, this guy, and this guy in our first team. Or at least uh, trying to break into it. Love seeing those wingers. Anyway, let me know what you think the score prediction is. I, okay, here's the thing. I have a weird feeling that Manchester United win this game, but I'm okay with that because of the way we've performed in preseason. I have a weird feeling that Eric Ten Hag is going to like out Dutch on a slot. Anyone else got that feeling? Just, just, I don't know, those two face each other and actually Arnie Slot's got the better of the two of them, but just let me know. I'll chat to you guys in a while. Much love. Bye.